Right, maintaining hedge trimmer blades. This is a long reach hedge trimmer. It's plus steel. And this is an ordinary short reach one. And this is a posh one. You can do a much cheaper version, vibrates a lot more. Maintenance is fairly simple, day to day maintenance. Basically you need to lubricate this, these set of blades because these, vibe, these move against each other. If they're not lubricated they can wear quite quickly and also wear against the carrier bar which is here and against these uh, securing bolts. So to maintain them on site you need one of those and one of those they also come in a big one and this is basically the pocket sized version still do this so you can carry it in your pocket and you can maintain it during the working day simply by doing that little and often and you turn him over and you do the top especially the uh, the toe of the bar which does quite a lot of work get the idea and then this grease port comes out and this thing actually screws into it I'll show you that now if we can find something to undo it it's a T27 Torx Jeez, that's tight. <clears throat> Hang on, I'm going to put you down. Oh, crap. Right, blow away some of the crap from around it because the crap can fall in. This is the gearbox in here. And if you get grit in the gearbox, it gets in amongst the gubbins. goes in there. These steel grease tubes are recommended because they screw into here. Promise they do. And you squeeze some grease in. And you do that again little and often. You can see the grease in there now even got a little pictogram there like cave art to tell you what uh, you should be doing right so that's daily maintenance on that done also need to check the air filter which is dead easy you undo that screw there and then you knock it out same as I've shown you with um, chainsaw air filters but that's a foam element and every so often you need to either change the blades or sharpen them because if you don't they inevitably take damage and they take wear and they get like this see there's a bit missing there and the edge is uneven and if you look on these ones there's a bit missing on that blade and there's a burr. Also here, this should be flat all the way across, but you've actually got a chamfer that's worn onto there. It's where the blades move against each other. So to sharpen them, you need to disassemble the power head. This is the way I do it. I use an angle grinder to sharpen on this side only. So basically sharpen these. You need to do all of those. And then when you've done that, you take off any burrs that you raise by sharpening. And I'll show you how to do that. On-site maintenance is exactly the same as the short reach one. So the spray, and there should be spray cans available in the middle unit. Over there.
the compressor, we'll just ignore it. comes in a small one and these appear to be knackered they should be available there for you to use if you're a foreman you should have one of these or the large one and a sprayer to leave the blades as you go on site and the person you delegate to use of one of these two should be uh, spraying the blades. Thank you very much. Right, on these ones, I'm basically going to take this apart, sharpen the blades. You can use a Dremel and sharpen these ones as they become exposed. So that one, 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 that one. and then turn it over. That one, that one, that one, that one. But every other one you can't do because you can't get at it unless you actually move the blades. Which on some of these you can. Be careful not to cut yourself. The other thing you can do is to marry them up and then do all the sides. In fact, you can do that with an angle grinder I'm using a flat disc you tend to get uh, bits of grit from the flat disc in between the two and what you can't do is take the burrs off the flat surfaces of all the cutting faces this here with a little pictogram come cave art is your port for your grease you can see grease in there to get this apart, basically all this has got to come out. And there's also a grease port here, which needs to be done once in the blue moon, because it doesn't do nearly as much work as this one here does. This of course transfers the drive from the main drive shaft, and this little thing here, to the gearbox and to the blades. spray exactly the same as you would with that thing right I'll take this to bits and I'll come back to you I'll take all these out and all these all the way along right all the nuts on the far side are off and the four screws out of the uh, gearbox cover that's the grease in there and you can see it's rather stiff knackered. There's not very much grease actually on the bearing surfaces inside and it looks like there's water in. You see this rusty bit probably is rust. Right, this has to come off here. basically a seal helps keep the gearbox in the pull of grease grease in the gearbox and then all these screws come out there's another one here and these two here have to come out I'll loosen those and come back to you because they're usually quite tight. Right, there we go. Loosen that one and this one here. The cover strip comes off. You can see this is bent. Shouldn't be bent, it should be straight. And this is a bearing surface on the top here. You can see the way it's uh, shiny in some parts. Then in amongst here, we've got a load of cap that builds up. 
for want of a better word. And you've got these spacers, which also act as bearing surfaces. Keep the blades running parallel. Make sure you don't uh, turn the thing over and lose those. These come out. Keep them separate and keep them clean. You don't want to in introduce rubbish into the gearbox because these ones are the same. Builds up, and this is looks like grass. So, if there's uh, grit in amongst there, that's going to wear the blades faster than otherwise. It comes out, Let's turn that round. This comes out. We were losing these two hardened steel washers, distance pieces in here. And there are also steel distance pieces, bearing surfaces as well at each of these. Don't lose them. You need to take those out and clean them up, especially if they're damaged or rusty. We'll take a chance and turn it over and show you that these three that we just took out from the gearbox all have recessed nuts in them. So you need a special socket because the clearance is very, very reduced. And this is why you have to take this piece off. Because they're, well, these two on the back are otherwise hidden. That's a modified socket. You can, I think, buy a special tool from still. But modifying the cheap socket is more cost effective. Right, this is the uh, the blade, this is the, uh, the top one as it is when it's being used. You can see where it's rubbed on these bearing surfaces. Get the pattern of a washer. And if you look at these edges, you'll see that this would not have cut very well at all. Right, clean this off and set up, and I'll show you how I sharpen these. If you couldn't sharpen these, this would be time for another set of blades. Right, I sharpen these blades using an angle grinder and a flat disc, but I'll make sure if it's an 80 grit or coarser, the smaller the number, the coarser the grit, that it's partly worn, so it's not too aggressive. It's easy to build up heat, change the temper of these blades, or go too far and remove too much metal. If you get your blades too thin, too pointy, in inverted commas, there isn't enough strength to keep them in place if you hit something, so you end up bending it taking out the uh, old blade set. They have a limited life. So what we're going to do in a tick is using the angle grinder, we're going to sharpen on all these edges. So I'm going to pop you up here and see if you can see. Yes, I think you can. Right, it's going to get noisy. See what I've done, keeping the angle the same 
is the original and keeping this surface flat the idea is to take it back enough to take most of the uh, the divots out of it and then you have to turn him over and take out the raised burrs because those can stop the blades from moving if you get two burrs coming together if you hit a piece of uh, metal or something which is what's happened here and take a little bit more out flatten off the rear surface right we're going to do that and then come back to you so that's all this side done to do this edge you need to turn him over but then if you're a right handed person you can't get at these so you have to pick it up you can see where I've been doing a lot of these against the edge of this bench over the years. Hold that there, and then using your angle grinder, hold this so it's horizontal, and then move the angle grinder backwards and forwards. And you have to do that with the last ones on this side. Because if you don't, the whole thing wobbles up and down. And it's an absolute sod to try and get an even angle. So I'll do that and then come back and show you the next phase. I don't know how much you saw, that's basically doing these little short ones in real time. Notice at each stage, the grinding wheel is used so that the uh, guard is towards you and the sparks are going away from you, staying out of your eyes. Or not wearing goggles because these are CE marked safety glasses. Right, next phase, let's see what I've done here. That's a lot nicer than it was before. It stands a chance of actually cutting now. But there is still some damage left in some of these. Turn it over. You've still got damage here and here. So what I'm going to do now is holding the uh, angle so it's flat. OK. 
keeping all my passes so that in the centre of these, so I don't grind away at the edge of these, introducing in more of a chamfer, I'm going to flatten all this off. You don't really have to do the top, but I'll just like to take the rust off. And you see now, I've got a set of blades which are much less damaged than they were before. And you can see grinding on this side is more or less flat, but not completely. Because it's a flap wheel, it's difficult to keep it in one plane because it flexes. If you use a grinding wheel, it's going to be far too coarse, you take off too much metal too fast. But that's one that's been done. And that's one as it came. And hopefully you can see the difference. So to do a couple of these blades, it takes a couple of hours. 15 pound an hour, it's 30 quid. And reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. Incidentally, while we're here, you can see where on these sections, where they go together, because they go together like that. And you can see one of the reasons for the failure of these blades if you hit something, raise a big enough burr on two of these, they won't go past each other, so the thing jams. And if you force it, you can actually bend one of the blades, which means automatically a new set of blades. Blades come in pairs, and you can buy them complete with a carrier bar. And you can see this has been starved of lube. This will be cleared out using a secret magic solvent and then reassembled and that will do another few weeks work all in all take about three hours <laughs>